tonight I'm going to tie an Enrico fly that, uh, but it's it's more about uh, some of the tools that I use in order to tie my flies, some of the tricks that come in handy. This is going to be a really simple fly. This is basically what we're going to be tying tonight. This is a just a very small, slim bait fish. I uh, like using it, uh, especially when the bait is smaller in the in the bay. It's tied on a size two hook, um, but and I haven't stuck any eyes on this. You can see it has a weed guard, which is what I'm holding it by. But we're going to go through some of the tools that. Uh, I use to do that, but let's start off by uh, just working with the fly material. Now, one of the greatest things that I, I've seen was using Velcro, and this is a nailing plate from Home Depot, it cost me you know, less than a buck, and I stuck a strip of Velcro, the sticky end of the Velcro. Now, what this thing is good for is hanging on to your material. As you can see, I've got all my Enrico fiber, all the little bundles of fiber that I'm going to use to tie this fly are already uh, laid out. The bundles are all, you know, very similar size. You know, if you p pick all your material ahead of time, you're going to end up with a lot more consistency between your flies. Um, this is a very important uh, tip as far as uh, handling your Enrico fiber. I also have that same piece of Velcro attached to my vise. You can see on the base of my vise here I have another strip that's right here and that's with the materials that I'm working with at the moment. Um, both of those things are come in really handy to handle your materials. Anyway, um, just to get this fly going and over with here real quick, um, I've got a half a bundle here of the Enrico fiber. I'm going to fold it across the thread, bring the stuff together, and I'm going to tie it clear back here in the back of the hook. By the way, this is a Gamakatsu SL12S number two hook, much better hook than the uh, number two Gamakatsu SC15 hook, um, much less likely to turn into a pretzel when a fish gets a hold of it. Um, anyway, I've got this first bundle tied in. Now I'm going to bring in a little bit of the flash fiber. This is a pearl, a UV pearl blue. I'm going to tie that in on top of that bundle. I'm stretching it, putting a little bit on both sides. Kind of stroke it out. Now on the underside of that particular bundle, I'm going to put my gill in. Um, this is red silky fiber. By the way, the uh, color of the white is a uh, 3D white EP fiber. It's one of the 3D colors. Okay, now I'm tying all the way to the front of the hook, and I'm going to cut that off right behind the gill. Okay, bring in another bundle. This is the full length. I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to tie this one on the bottom side. I'm going to split it. I'm going to V it in like this on either side of the hook. Put one wrap of thread in front. Bring your material around the hook. Hold on to it and just tie it right on. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the hook over. Oops. Almost forgot my flash. 
this particular UV blue is very very fine it's I'm just making a little strip of it one wrap in front put the material on either side of the hook and tie that in okay now we're gonna flip over we're gonna tie the last bundle of hair on again I'm being it and I'm gonna tie it in on top of the hook bring that together we're gonna to get our UV blue pearl blue and we're going to put that on both sides of the hook. Okay. The fly is basically done. I'm going to trim. The excess flash out. And the next part is we're going to put in a weed guard. I've got a piece of 16 pound mason, hard mason. Now, I don't like using anything over like 16 pound in this mason because it's a fairly stiff mono. You fold it so, and then this is a pair of ring nose pliers. If you look at them, they've got a fairly fine tip. They don't have any kind of knurling on the inside of the jaw. You don't want the knurling because it just weakens the monofilament, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that right down here at the bottom of the loop of this mono, and I'm going to give it a really good hard pinch. As you can see, it put a pretty severe bend in that. It flattened the mono basically. So I'm going to bring this loop, hook it on the bottom of the hook eye right up here in front, and I'm going to put about five or six kind of angled wraps over the monofilament. You can see it's going to stay where it's at. Now I'm going to backfill it. I'm going to bring some mono in on the back side. To kind of harden where it's going to sit. Kind of stretch it out so it's in a nice V in front of the hook eye. Put a couple more wraps in front and I'm going to whip finish this now. Next tool in the arsenal. This is a, just a brushable crazy glue. It's Zappa Gap doesn't really matter what brand. I'm going to brush that to make sure that my monofilament stays where it's supposed to. Next tool in the arsenal. These are gate, I think they call them gate shears, they're cutters. You know, fairly fine these are really good. Don't ever use your scissors on monofilament. You'll screw them up. They'll, they won't close properly. Uh, they'll have a big gap in them. What you do with these is you bring them in and you cut your monofilament just a little bit longer than the tip, the point of the hook. So basically this fly is done at this point. I'm going to remove it from my vise. 
Now, you can see this is just kind of a blob of hair. Um, in order to get it to taper out nicely like this one that's already done, you got to comb it out. Now, I know you can use like a mustache comb or something like that. I actually keep a mustache comb in my in my vest pocket on uh, fishing trips to comb one of these flies out in case it gets pounded by the fish and starts looking all twisted. But the best way to brush this out is one of these wire poodle brushes. This is just a really simple tool. The reason you use one of these rather than a comb is you can actually comb across the hook. You can't do that with a comb. You can only comb behind it. So get yourself one of these. Um, you can get it for less than 10 bucks at any pet store, probably Walmart and such too. Um, I'm going to brush this fly out. kind of square it up. Now, next tool. A good pair of very long scissors. Um, you know, there are a lot of different kinds. These happen to be titanium coated. No big deal. I still paid less than 20 bucks for these. Um, you can look around in the fabric shops, the craft stores, uh, you can find them at Walmart for that matter. Now, this is the central point. This is that long piece of monofilament, or that long piece of hair that I tied in the back. I'm going to use that as the center point, and I'm going to cut up and kind of curve toward the front. You can see I got a bit of a curve to it now. I'm going to turn this one over, kind of stroke it out a little bit again, and this one I'm going to end up down here at the, the back of the gape of the hook. I'm going to go from that same point, and I'm going to cut, give it a couple of strokes. That one came out pretty good first time. Neaten up. Okay, we've gotten it this far. We're in the home stretch. Now we're going to color it. Now I use uh, just the Copic markers. Now you also have these fancy Copic uh, airbrush. That's kind of a handy item. If you just want to highlight the, the back edge or right along the top, that's what this thing is for. You can put a nice, maybe a lighter highlight right along the top edge of this fly and then come back and, and uh, mark some darker bars on it. Um, but that's not what we're going to do. What we're going to do is I've got this mandrel that I cut out of a sheet of uh, plastic. I cut it on the table saw, um, tried to get the gaps as uh, even as possible. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this fly down flat on the bench and I'm going to put my, take my Copic marker and mark this fly. Okay, now we've got the barred marks on it. Now, the last step on this fly is to stick some eyes on it. Um, I use this glue. This is the last tip here. This is uh, fletch tight. It's for fletching arrows. There's a couple of different kinds of it. I don't really see any difference between them, um, at least for what I'm using this stuff for. But what you do 
is because it's got a nice nozzle tip, you can work the glue right down. It's, it's kind of the consistency of airplane glue. Um, you can work that down into the fibers and all the way down to the hook shank. And it, you stick the fly on it, or the eye on it, I'm sorry, and it will dry in about maybe 20 minutes or so and I'd say within the first hour you should be able to use it to fish with. Um, if you do both sides of it, it works a little bit better. Uh, you know, stick both eyes on at one time, don't go production and you know, stick all the eyes on one side first. I found the, uh, have found that if you get that sandwich of glue, wet glue, in between the two eyes and squeeze it down to the shank, the damn things will never come off. Um, be generous, but be frugal. You know, uh, uh, you definitely need enough glue on there to, you know, stick the eyes on. Anyway, I'm going to have uh, some pictures of the completed fly after I stick a couple of eyes on it. Um, just a really simple, very fast deceiver. Thanks. Mm -hmm.